I rambling and just like cut me off. <laughs> uh, honestly, I ramble too, so like uh, don't even worry about it. I'll probably cut you off and start rambling, so that's. Uh, that's <laughs> fine. Fine with that. How's it going? How's your day? Yeah, it's good. It's been, uh, I just started this job at the beginning of the month. So it's been a kind of like hectic getting like adjusted and we also moved. So it's been like an insane kind of month, but it's been good. Like I'm grateful to have a new flat and to have a job. Thank God as I can say in this country, but it's been good. Yeah. yeah. I'm literally in my bathroom because it has like the best lighting. Like why? Yeah, bathrooms always have the best lighting. I know, it's weird. Like, every other room in the house is kind of dark, so. Just in the bathroom, though, like. I, honestly, I wouldn't, if you hadn't said, I wouldn't have known. It's not like, okay. it's not like I can see the toilet or something. <laughs> okay, good, good, cool. Well, I guess, I guess what I want to first talk about is maybe how you got into baking. You know, was it like a family situation or you just one day started baking and discovered you loved it? You know, like, how'd that uh, start? Well, actually, it's so funny because my parents always tell me this, that, like, my great-grandfather, like, the guy I was even, like, named after, was a baker and had his own bakery in Kingston, oh, wow. Ontario. And so I feel like they've been, like, conditioning me from, like, a young age to, like, be a pastry chef. And I'm like, okay. I'm just kidding. But uh, I don't know. I do love my mom and my grandmother bakes a lot, too. Um, so I kind of, like, grew up in the kitchen. And then... Um, uh, like when I was, I think in grade nine, so I think like what, 15, 16, um, I like volunteered at this like my parents' favorite restaurant, which is a really good restaurant in Toronto and um, called Tutti Matti. And the owner, they're like, do you need any like free help? And um, she's like, sure. And so I went in like every Saturday um, and like just did prep and then left like at the beginning of service. And this was like before I was like in baking and pastry. Um, and it was like a lot of like cutting butter and like dicing herbs and like all this kind of thing. And then um, in grade 11, it was like, okay, well, like I need to figure out what I'm gonna study in school. And all my friends were going to like psychology or like law, like eventually law and whatever. And I was like, what the hell am I gonna study? Like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and, it was, and like, I was, I was contemplating culinary or pastry. And I feel like I could just see myself more long-term doing pastry and I was more interested in it um, sure. and so then eventually I went into pastry and now I'm here <laughs> it's funny I mean I mean it's cool you kind of like started with like helping like somewhere and then being yeah, like oh sure. I guess I like this and I need to figure out what I want to do with my life so <laughs> yeah it's kind of like intersected yeah Right. I see. I went to school for like photo video. It was called electronic okay. media. Yeah. And so I got out of school, you know, you go into that kind of program thinking like, I have to go make movies in Hollywood or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't do that. And I didn't want to do that. And yeah. so now I'm kind of like, kind of using it, you know, with photography and yeah, of course. I'm like, good for you for like, kind of like finding what like avenue you want to go down. Right. And it's a lot of pressure asking like, so much pressure. 18 19 year olds to be like what do you want to do for the rest of your life yeah yeah and i feel like there's so much anxiety around like at the time like like people going to like meltdowns about like what they want to do for the rest of their lives and what it's like just don't worry it's every step like every day at a time you know like figure it out you can change it up but, you know it's crazy. right well that's why i feel like london they have gap years right yeah i think so i don't know their school system is really weird here like I don't know, like, I'll be like, oh, grade seven. And they were like, what year? And I'm like, oh, right, they don't have it. It's like year, but I'm like, I have no idea. Like, that. Sure. But I think they yeah, do. I'm not even gonna try and understand how different yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so where are you from originally? And I guess then what, like, what brought you to London? So I'm originally from Toronto, Ontario. Cool. And I have just always loved traveling. Like I was really fortunate when I was a kid, we'd always go on like family vacations. And I was just always excited to like get on a plane. And like, I remember when I was a kid, like this was like 
like we weren't like Pan Am or anything like that, but it was like Air Canada. But it was still like, I just like loved flying. I loved getting my like Lululemon like pants on and like, you know, <laughs> like airplane gear and like going and traveling and flying and even the bad airplane food and still traveling. And eventually when I was actually making my own money, I was like, oh, I can spend it on travel myself. I'm like, I would go with friends. And I went to exchange in college to um, France for two months uh, to study oh, pastry. And, that, and I was like living away. That was the first time, other than like, living in college, like in residence. That's like my first time living abroad for my parents. And I was like, I can do this. Like, I don't have to be the same country as my parents. Like, it's totally fine. And then ever since then, I was like, I kind of want to like move away because North American kitchens are very different from like uh, European or um, like UK kitchens. And so okay. I, I was going to ask that how different they were. Yeah, it's 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 quite different. Like now, I think I'm just used to it. But like when I first moved here, I was like, whoa. Um, and so I really want to experience that and like step it up. I knew by like I wanted to like grow and like learn more and like kind of step up to my game and I knew that that would kind of be like a way of doing it um and so uh it's actually very easy for Canadians I don't know what it's like now post Brexit but pre-Brexit it was very easy I'm sure it's still the same as for Commonwealth but um sure yeah but it's actually very easy for Canadians to get a visa to come here on a two-year visa um I won't bore you with all like the visa details but um <laughs> My friend actually came and did this visa who I was working with also in pastry. And she was on this visa and she did pastry and had an amazing time. And uh, we literally missed each other by like a couple months between like moving and moving back. Oh man. And um, she was, I was just so envious of her and I was like, I want to do that. And so I, and she helped me so much like figure out and navigate the kind of um, ropes to take um, with applying and everything. Um, and so, that's kind of why I moved here and it's been amazing ever since. I'd highly recommend it to anyone for sure. Ugh. I mean, I love, I love London. We went there for a honeymoon and like, everyone was like, you're going to run out of stuff to do. Like, cause we were going Never. for like 10 days or stuff. And they were like, you're going to be bored after three days. I'm like in yeah. London, like what? Yeah. There's so much to do here. And like you, like, I was like, I have no idea. Like at first I was overwhelmed. Now I'm like, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Like there's so many markets and like areas of the city. It's, it's so fun. Like, you oh, and you're so close to like so many other places too. If you want to like travel like north or south or, you know, like there's so many other places you can get to. Ugh. Yeah. And like, it's, uh, I don't have friends because I've been here like in, in August, it'll be two years that I've been here. And the only place outside of London that I've been is like Essex and Brighton. And like, that's <laughs> England and like I thought I was going to be like jet setting this year. And, like, <laughs> my first was to come in September, was to go to Paris. And, like it's like a little weekend getaway. That doesn't happen. Um, but oh, hopefully in the future. Hopefully in the future. You've got plenty of time to see. Yeah. <laughs> what um now i don't want to talk about the pandemic too much because it's very triggering yeah. for some people but i mean how was this how was this past year for you in terms of i mean baking you know job i don't know I mean, that like i don't like also i can't I swear um <laughs> like it's bad i work in kitchen it's like it's all I do. just kidding um no, it's, it's had its good days, it's had its bad days. Like, I was really fortunate to, like, in last May, I moved into, and I moved since, uh, moved into, like, a bigger flat with two of my friends, and it had, like, a really nice kitchen, and so I kind of, like, spread out, and at first, like, obviously, I feel like everyone just spent, like, the first, like, two months in bed, and right before the pandemic, I was also made redundant, like, I was let go of my job, which I was really enjoying, mm -hmm. um, so I did, it didn't really hit me, I don't think, until like three or four months in when I was like, ooh, I don't have an income and I'm buying furniture for a house right. and like, it was, and there was nothing coming. And like, I've been working since I was pretty much 16, like since I got my first job. Um, yeah. And so like even not in hospitality or in culinary, like I've been working since I was 16. So it was very weird to like be not mobile for like um, yeah. so long. And then eventually my parents were like, um, I was like complaining to them and they were like, make yourself busy. And cause like at the time, I think we were like in and out of lockdowns. Um, both of my flatmates were able to do some kind of work and like leave the house and do some kind of work. Whereas I was just like at home in my room, like the entire time. And, <laughs> um, 
uh, and my parents were like, make yourself like a schedule, like bake and post on Instagram, like make that your job. And I was like, okay. And so uh, I just started doing that. And it was, it was fun because um, like I could bake what I wanted. I can make it look the way I wanted without like, a, like another chef telling me how they wanted to play it. Obviously like I work with great chefs, but like it's different when it's your own stuff. And, yeah. Um, I also really like like the like the recipe development aspect of it, like trying different things, and also like the photography element of it. Like I have no photography experience at all, and I would shoot it on my phone. But it was just like fun to kind of um, like have that job, I guess, to do, and um, like it gave me purpose, I guess, when I was like literally had no purpose in life and wasn't having an income and. Um, it reminded me like why I really, it really, and I've always been like the kind of person that's like, I am not my job. Like I, I don't like <laughs> right. to work very much. And whereas like now for like the first time in my entire life, I was like, wow. Like I didn't realize how much I was like connected to what I, not like the, like my job per se, but like the work element of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was kind of like an eye because I was like, wow, I really love doing this. And like, it's, it's. Like, and it's really sad that I wasn't able to do it for so long. And I, like, I kept putting on my CV and stuff, but like, obviously everything's like, we're in a global pandemic, no one's hiring. Um, right. But I, baking really helped with it. But now that things are starting to look up, it's a lot better. But yeah, it's been good. What about you? Yeah. It was, so I kind of, my, I don't bake full time. Um, my full time mm-hmm. job, I work at like a health and wellness company here in oh, town. Cool. So, we didn't really close um, mm-hmm. because we were like healthcare adjacent. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So we were kind of open the whole time, but I did work from home because um, a lot of what I can do is remote. So that was nice in terms of being able to adapt. Um, but like my husband got let go. Like we did know a lot of people that got let go from their jobs and this yeah. whole past year, the same thing, just kind of like, okay, yeah. now today I'm going to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's, uh, talking about like Instagram like it's nice that like you can I mean way to go parents for giving you the <laughs> the schedule yeah um but that you can like kind of have like a sense of community in in a time yeah. where you're feeling kind of alone or just like what what's my purpose kind of a thing like kind of like okay like I'm putting this out there and other people are enjoying it or commenting back yeah. like and I mean and also just using your phone too I need to remember that like I always get in my head, I think maybe because I went to school for like photo and video that I have to like make this like huge production for every post. And I think like no one really cares but me about that. Um, So it's like, it's it's a good reminder to be like, just post something that like looks good and people want to eat and like they are going to like it no matter what. Like, yeah. And like, if you're happy, what it took me a while to learn is like, if you're happy with it and you really like it, it's like, that's all that matters, you know? Like if you're right. proud of the photo, just post it. I know. I need to like every time I bake something to be like, don't get out your backdrops, don't get out your lights, like yeah. take out your phone, take a picture of it. Okay, so you were talking about um, kitchens being different. How? What was the biggest thing like coming from Canada? To, you know, like what was the biggest difference that you found? Well, the first was the lingo. Like what people call things is completely different. And so, like, they asked me that I've started working at, like, through, like, which is also not a thing in North America, at least in Canada, I have never seen it. It's, like, agency work, where, like, you work for an agency and you're paid hourly, and mm-hmm. you kind of, like, a temporary worker and you get contracted per place. And I thought moving here was, like, a great way to, like, and my friend told me she did this. Uh, it was, like, a great way to meet people and a great way to, like, see different kitchens and kind of sure. like, what I kind of want. And then find like a, a job after that kind of thing. Um, and so the first thing, yeah, was the lingo. And like, they'd ask me to get something. And I'd be like, what is that? Like, sorry. <laughs> like, um, like uh, something that we call like in Canada, like a hotel tray, like a hotel pan. They would call it a gastro. And I'm like, how do you get from one to the other? <laughs> like, it doesn't even sound like, it's not even this like close. Right. Um, or like, I don't know, just like weird things. But also, I think it's like obviously it depends what kitchen you work in. But also, like it's a lot more like strict. I I feel like I would say here there's a lot more like 
uh, hotel culture is more of a thing. Whereas back okay. home in Toronto, where I'm from, um, hotels aren't really like obviously there's like like the kind of like spa hotel high tea kind of vibe like the Windsor Arms is like a big place um and that's obviously great but it's not as much of a thing like people go to tea here and hotels are like a quarter and um uh so there are a lot of people that have to work in these hotels and um that was the majority of my like agency experience was in hotels which I had never had before which was really good um, and I learned so much, like at one place, I was at Claridge's hot like hotel, um, probably for the longest. And, um, and I was eventually hired full time and it was like the hardest, probably the hardest job I've ever had in my entire life. Probably oh, it will be the hardest job I will ever have. Um, but it was like, there's constantly things, everything's going on all at once. It's never ending. It's so busy. Like you're, ru like you're running from the moment you get there to the moment you leave and you never leave on time. And it's like definitely work that's like not forever because it's not maintained. Like you can't like sustain it for like years and years. And of course people do. Sure. But, um, I, I mean, your mental like, health at some point yeah. is important. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's just, it was really hard. And like, I'm so glad I did it, but now I'm back to a restaurant. So, um, <laughs> no, but it was really great. I wanted to experience that. And that's why I moved here. It was to, like experience kind of like the really hard, intense work and learn so much, which I did. And um, obviously, yeah. I never stops, but yeah, it's, it was really fun. Well, I feel like sometimes in those kind of jobs too, you learn a lot faster because you're like, oh you have God. no choice but to keep up and to like learn it yeah. and get better at it and go. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember. Um, we do, at Claridge's, they do, did, when I was there, they did a lot of like chocolate work, which I like, I was actually on exchange when they taught you that in school. And so I just never learned how to do it for you. And, and then what am I, like in my first job, we did it like a tiny bit, but um, I found in restaurants, like tempering is not a huge thing that we do, but at Claridge's, it was like, you did it for everything. Okay. Yeah, like it was on every like little garnish on everything, and um, eventually they like asked me to do it, and I was like, "Oh my god, okay." <laughs> and they were very like helpful, and like they taught me. Um, one of my like my sous chef was really like um, patient with me, and like she taught me. It was like it was great because it was like you have to learn, you have to do. It. You're not gonna be like mm, no, you know. So uh, no, it was great, and I I loved it. And after that, I was like, "You want me to do this? Sure, I'll do it." Like I said, I'm a all right. I volunteer. I, I loved it. And I, I do miss it now. But it's stuff like that where like you just have to do it and you learn like what you're saying. Ugh. Okay, if you could give me slash anyone a tip about tempering chocolate, what would it be? Because I cannot do it. <laughs> okay. I think it's been a while, so like I'm definitely a little rusty. But uh what I recommend if you're gonna temper chocolate, look at the bag um uh temperatures because okay. Say like dark chocolate, it's these temperatures that you have to bring it up to, bring it down to, bring it up to, like to work with it. But like it could be different based on the percentages. So make sure just look at the bag and then do what the bag says. Um, there's also different ways of tempering chocolate. Um, I personally find now that like the marble is just the easiest. Like I know seeding may be easier, but or to some, but I find like working with the actual chocolate, I find is easier than like. Stirring. I don't know, but that's just personal. Purpose. Sure. But definitely the seating, are big seating is like leaving some out, putting it back in at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. And then that kind of brings up and down the chocolate. But when you like have the marble or like the cold surface, it's like you can almost like tell when it's getting thicker sure. um, by like cooling down. So I find that, um, but obviously not everyone has like a big slab of marble that they can just like pull out for different chocolate. But so right. I do get that. <laughs> Um, but I would say like the biggest thing is the temperatures. And also, yeah, like following the instructions on the bag that you were given. Like, yeah, that's the same thing you can do. Yeah, for sure. I think I've accidentally tempered chocolate, um, you good. know, which works yeah. out sometimes, but in terms of like whatever I would set out to like temper chocolate, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, this is just going to be melted and it's going to do whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's just the and it's fine. But also another thing is always test that it's tempered before you actually like do whatever you're doing because the worst thing is like doing 
whatever you're doing, you're doing so much of it. And then having it be like cloudy or like it not set is the worst thing. Like I would, I would always do is like take like an offset pot knife and like have a little bit on that, but then put a little bit on the marble because the marble and the metal is going to kind of set at a different time because it's different temperatures. Um, sure. So like see kind of, and you can like kind of see it starting to like set around the edge. So like that's also a really good tip I found is like just test it before and then go. <laughs> right before you commit to like making a million things and then yeah yeah Ugh. that's the worst part of like the baking process is like. I feel like when you work with something like yeast or like tempered chocolate and it's like something like you get all the way to a certain point and you can't go back and it's ruined. And now yeah. you just have this product that like, yeah. is it going to be bad, but like, is not what you set out to make? Yeah. Well, even like we said, like, with, like, a, but like yeast, it's like, I think you like are supposed to actually like test that it's like alive and well. I never do and so it's just like playing sure. on the edge that maybe my yeast is dead. Maybe this like right. 10 kilo batch of my thigh, but I don't know. <laughs> right. I mean, I never tested either, to be honest, because I mean, like 95% of the time your yeast is active. And yeah. especially if it's dry, but like it lasts for years and whatever. Right. So, I mean, like, yes, but I feel like every recipe is always like test it, but I don't know. I feel like lately I've been seeing a lot of like chefs and bakers being like, eh, just throw it in with everything else and you'll be fine. And yeah, <laughs> don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. What would, uh, what's your favorite? thing to make I guess like if you yeah. could pick one thing what would you say honestly I don't know why I think I, I um, discovered this over I love shoe like I love a peri oh. I love anything too, really yeah it's weird I'm like why I don't know <laughs> but um yeah no I love shoe it's weird <laughs> I have never made shoe like I, there's still so many things I haven't made and I feel like yeah you got you. Like- and it's easy Super easy? Yeah, I would say so. Like it's, yeah. Is it, so are you, with shoe, are you baking that or are you frying that? Well, you could actually do both. Like, um, like, are you talking about like when you actually make the shoe itself, the actual dough kind of dough? Pass? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so you basically make the actual dough on the stove top and then you basically like your summer recipes call for like just no summer recipes call for like milk and water. Most of the ones I've done is just like milk and water. Um, and then butter and sugar, right? yeah, sugar and salt in a pot and you to boil. Then you add your flour, stir that in until it's like dry on the bottom. Then you put it in a mixer and you kind of let it take the steam out a little bit so it's like not hot. And then you add your eggs. And then once you add your eggs, you have like your, you let it mix until it gets the consistency you're supposed to get. And then that's like your dough done. And then you just bake it off from there. But what I've seen people do, I've never actually done it, but what I've seen people do is kind of like make like crullers out of it. And like mm. basically like bake it and then put it and deep fry it. And then like glaze over it. Okay. Which looks really good. Yeah. I think that's what I've seen. That's why I was like, do I fry it yeah. or do I bake it? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a churro, but I, I don't think churro is the same dough. But I think churro is also pipe. Okay, yeah, churro. Okay, I've tried to make churros once and just did that didn't work. Um, but it was, yeah. it felt like it would have been similar to. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, frying stresses me out because I have thermometers and whatever, but like it's keeping the consistent temperature is like, I'm constantly like turning it up, turning it off, taking it off the heat, putting it back on the heat. I feel like they're all different shades of fried. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that. Like, like um, at one place we had to do these like, they do these like caramelized nuts or like candy nuts. And I actually highly recommend, but like you have to deep fry them. But it creates mm. these like, um, these nuts, like they're perfectly glossy all over and they don't stick together. Um, mm. Fly. Um, and you have to like deep fry them and I worked at one place and I did them and they didn't have a deep fryer or they do what they're like the nuts or like the oil would be contaminated with the nuts so I was like fair and I had to do sure. it in a, in a pot I was like oh I don't want to like regulate it like, <laughs> like this is it's too much but then right. like, I did it at home like I made donuts at home and I was like okay this but it's like turn off turn on turn off it's such a bother I get it's like if I did it more often, I'm sure I would get better at it. But yeah. I would like I just want to complain about it, you know. <laughs> I probably get that. I'm I'm ready to complain too. I know my first experience with a 
deep fryer was I used to work at a sushi restaurant and so it was like a legit fryer and it would like handle all the temperature for you and we would make like tempura like the crunchy batter to go on top of sushi and so we would have to make the batter but it was kind of like a preset thing but then going from like legit machine to home oil is very different yeah it's interesting for me too I'm like I can't (laughs) right and then what do I do with the oil after it's like I'm not going to I I guarantee I'm not disposing of it correctly. Yeah, yeah, no, me neither. Definitely quite a good Because I think you're supposed to take it to like a legit like oil dispensary. Like you're supposed to take it somewhere. Oh. I don't my, know. I tell my, like, my mother's voice and be like, don't pour down your drain, it's going to rock it. But I'm a renter, so I don't know. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's only a problem for like a year then and won't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you, okay, so have you only worked in kitchens in terms of doing pastry and baking, or have you worked at, like, a bakery? Um, so I worked at, like, part of, like, my internship. Um, I worked at a patisserie um, mm. in Toronto, um, and that was, like, 4 a.m. start, and you leave at, like, 1 or 2 in the afternoon. And after, I was, like, only for seven weeks, but, like, never again will I wake up. At four in the morning for a job like I just cannot <laughs> it's not me I get people do it all the time I'm like I just can't like I, I cannot I need my sleep and but also like you don't really have like a life like I went to bed sure. at, like maybe six in like the evening 5 30 was like a good night and um it's just like I never wanted to see friends I was just tired all the time yeah um, and I mean I didn't love the atmosphere of it um but I mean that aside, like it, it was great, but um, I just it wasn't for me. Like so, like you. Re- but I have a, one of my close friends. She is like bakery is her life. Like she loves it. She doesn't go into four in the morning, but like that is very much like her passion. And she loves like she can like roll croissants in her sleep, and that's like her thing. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, everyone finds their like section of what what, what they love to do. Um, but. Um, bakery just wasn't for me and even like going through this process of like looking for jobs I was like for a brief time I was like I'll buy anything I'll work at a bakery I'll just do sourdough and then they would respond to me like there's this one restaurant that I, this probably looks really bad I did respond back but they it was like a pasta restaurant which I love it's great um, but they really just do like pasta and then like sourdough and uh, which is great and, and like right. it's great quality too but um, he like looked at my resume. It was just like you realize like this is like pretty much just sourdough, right? And I'm like, yeah, it's great. And then he was like, because I won't be like offended if you don't want to like just make sourdough. It's, like I get that like it's not really your thing. And I'm like, oh, fine. And then I was and then I thought about it. I was like, I don't really want to be made. like I I'm like, oh, <laughs> for a job, but I was like, I'm just gonna keep looking, you know. But right. Um, yeah. He probably already like read well. off. He was like. Yeah, he's not happy. He is not. He's no. But um, but what I did learn this process is like there is the right job out there. Like if you just keep looking, like you'll find like the right. What was important for me is because um, it's just like finding the right fit and um, because even like in kitchens, obviously not the right kitchens right for everyone. And like environment is like a huge thing for me. And so. Sure. Um, just keep on like because you can do like a million trial shifts. Um, I don't everyone's going to be amazing. Um, but like finding them one that was like the right kind of fit was great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about work life balance. Like yeah. not, you know, like I get some people, you know, it's, and it's different at different stages in your life. You're like, okay, I'm now like in this stage of life, I'm going to commit my life to work and that's what it's about. And, but now like, I feel like now, I don't know, I'm about to be 30. I'm like, I need also like life work balance. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think it's important. I feel like after this year, people have really, okay, I was watching this Kim Kardashian interview and uh, <laughs> it was actually a Vogue interview. And the interviewer was like, so Kim, like you're really busy. Like, what are you putting back on your plate? Like after now that it's been empty, like what are you putting back on your plate? And she's like, what well, has been like such like an interesting experience is like this past year, like having nothing, being with kids, whatever. And she's like the, um, uh, being fortunate enough to like having an empty plate and now being able to choose what you put back on your plate is right. really like, a great experience to have which like obviously 
not everyone is like as fortunate to have the option sure like, working like multiple jobs whatever but um like to be like okay like look for the right job and like be fortunate to like um decide i want more of like a work-life balance is like amazing um which i think a lot of people are like now realizing like hmm, i don't have to like work a million hours every day like i can actually see my friends and relax and have like me days and, you know what i mean right i love that i like the idea of like you know turning what's like an empty plate a bad thing into a good thing and saying like yeah. okay i've got this empty plate how can i fill it back with the things that matter yeah um way to go kim um, yeah. okay i love this is my pet her name's kim. <laughs> <laughs> After Kim Kardashian? I know. And okay, my friend and I also have like matching photos. I'm like not obsessed with the Kardashians, but like I like them. Like my friend and I have like matching phone cases too. Like I want to get Is that the crying one? Yeah. It's it's also um uh Chris is on there, same with Kyle, Chloe's on there. Yeah, we have the same photo. Yeah, so have you i okay i've only recently discovered this because my husband was obsessed with it and then in quarantine we watched laguna beach in the hills have you ever watched okay. those no i wasn't allowed to watch those shows growing up like i wanted to but <laughs> i was not allowed and i remember like she, i would like watch like the like, gossip girl and she'd be like no i'm, watch I'm like what the hell mom <laughs> <laughs> well okay i just say i highly recommend there are like a million episodes. It's ridiculous. So now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. For um, me, um, the Real House Vibes of Beverly Hills, like addicted, it's unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. I have never seen any of the Real House Vibes. Beverly Hills, start there. It's by, it's, I haven't seen any Gosh. of it, but I kind of watched New York, but I just kind of, mm. That's how it feels. There's so many of them. I feel like, where would you oh, even, okay. it's not like, the marvel universe where there's like an order it's like i feel like you can watch whatever you want but yeah but thank you for doing this and thank you for asking this is so fun yeah see i promise it was super chill no pressure yeah, <laughs> yeah so fun yeah okay well cool. i hope you have a good rest of the day and i'm sure we'll chat again you as well i guess of course yeah look forward to it cool. all right thank you see ya see ya